Hi there. Um, welcome to the first episode of my games room. As you can see, big fan. Um, today I'm going to be talking about a game that's really close to my heart called uh, Brutal Legend. Um, first released in 2009 uh, for the Xbox 360 and the PS3. Um, it's a heavy metal kind of open world strategy game. So it's got elements of RTS stuff and whatnot. And it's, pro it's been my favourite game for about 14 years. A very, very long time. And it's it's seen me through ups and downs and lefts and rights and all sorts of sorts of nonsense. I've even acquired a small collection beyond the so 360 and the PS3 copies. So I guess I'll start with those. This is my first copy. Well, technically my second. Um, so when I got Brutal Legend, I was going through a bit of a bit of a flump and I kind of had been following it for a while and I'm a big fan of Jack Black so naturally sucked in by that I'm also a huge fan of Tim Curry love Tim Curry um especially in especially in this where he's playing leather bondage demon Emperor Diviculus um plays it very <laughs> Not straight, very not straight, um, but it's probably my absolute favourite role he's ever done. So, got this in tail end of 2009. I'd traded in my original Xbox 360 um, into game here in the UK for about 55 quid. And for that I was able to pick up the game and my first strategy guide, um, which kind of covered everything. Covered absolutely everything, and I'd say within about a day, I was obsessed. Completely and utterly obsessed. I just loved it. Open world, driving around in a cool-ass car with miniguns strapped to the front of it, courtesy of Ozzy Osbourne. Heavy metal blaring out of the mouth of metal on the deuce itself. That's the car, by the way. Um, there are two others, but you can't drive them in the main campaign, which kind of sucks. Um... Yeah, I completed that game pretty quickly. Like, it, it, it took a grand total of 11 hours, but towards the tail end of that, there's a there was a five hour gap between the second to last mission and the actual final one, because I just didn't want it to end, because it was just that good. I still go back to this game every single year. I end the year with it, and I start the year with it. Because it's just so goddamn charming. Now, as I said, I've acquired some other items um, to do with Brutal Legend. Um, kind of started with that original Xbox 360 version. Um, bought both of the DLCs, which were two map packs. Um, unfortunately, missed out on the pre-order, which was a um, which was a guitar uh, focused around the main human enemy for the first third of the game uh, who are called the Hair Metal Militia under General Lion White. And uh, it's, it's a rather wonderful pre-order bonus as I discovered only this year when I downloaded it on the Xbox One um, where every time he plays the guitar he goes, Look, Muffin! Um, and, yeah, just completely ridiculous. That being said... Um, shortly after, uh, unfortunately, uh, the, the disc was scratched beyond repair and laser burned, um, but the 360 I'd been using it on, so I had to move on and get a new copy and, uh, traded in my own, uh, bought this, the new one from the same game I bought it from in the first place, um, took in my old copy, shoved it in the new case and went, yeah, this is laser disc, but I haven't got my money back. So um, I do not advocate doing that. Unless it's game. Um, no, I don't advocate doing that. that, that that's mean. <laughs> um, yeah. Over the years, I've acquired some other stuff, as I keep saying. 
as I'm sure you're now bored of listening to me talk about. First one was another strategy guide. Um, my friend bought me that at university um, shortly after I acquired the PS3 version, which I had a PS3. I wanted another copy of my favourite game. That will be a running trend. Um, I've got multiple copies of some of my favourite games um, from anything from Halo 2 to Stubbs the Zombie. Um, which we, we will get we will get to Steps the Zombie. A uh, little while later, it's only really the last couple of years um, that I got more Brutal Legends stuff. I always kicked myself for never picking up that statue of Eddie with his big old axe swinging down like that. But uh, it kind of started with this t-shirt, which is Eddie's in the game. Then the art book. Big old art book. Sorry, light reflecting there. Yep. Big old freaking art book full of stuff like Ophelia's hearse. More Drowning Doom stuff. And, uh, yeah. I believe it had an interview from Tim Schafer, who was the developer of the game. He developed things like Psychonauts, Psychonauts 2, uh, Grim Fandango, Dave Tentacle, Full Throttle. I say Full Throttle was probably one of the more blatant inspirations um, for it, for um, Brutal Legend, as was just, let's take every heavy metal album cover ever and turn it into a strategy video game. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, I never got around to playing the multiplayer with anybody. Played it with a couple people, but they never got into it as much as I did. Um, so I spent an inordinate amount of time in the skirmish mode, as I do in pretty much any strategy game I play, to the point where that becomes the default mode over multiplayer or the campaign or whatever. Um, yeah. I'd say if I had to tier list it for the multiplayer, it probably would go Drowning Doom at the top. So Drowning Doom are a debuff-based faction where they... Uh, their individual units are weaker than the other two factions. That being said, they have three different units, all of which debuff different, um, do different debuffs. So, for example, one slows one down, others do damage over time, and one, um, one lowers their attack power. Then you've got Tainted Coil, which is Tim Curry and a whole slurry of bondage demons. And they are as disgusting as you may you may think. They are uncomfortable. Um, that being said, again, Tim Curry's performance mostly mostly brings out brings out the um, the humour with them, especially with his landing and takeoff noises, which are like, Rah! um, yes, I, I played that game enough to know. To know how to do his landing and takeoff noise, uh, his landing noise is <laughs> um, <laughs> which is always fun. So, um, second up, or oh, fifth up, fifth up, should I say, we've got a promotional copy of Brutal Legend, which, yeah. So, my wife bought me this a couple years ago, very happy with it. Um, she's still depressed over the fact that I had to open it because it was sealed, but the disc was rattling around. So here we are. I've, uh, I've opened it. I have played it, actually. I have played it on occasion. It's pretty good. Then we got to my final version of Brutal Legend that isn't just the Steam version I bought again, which is the limited indie box version, one of 3,000 copies. You can kind of see the reflection of Orma Godin there. Orma Godin is a hell beast of sorts who was um, who was involved with the creation of the Brutal Legend universe, apparently. And this is just stuff full of stuff. It's stuff full of things to kind of appreciate. So, for example, we've got a leather-scented air freshener. And when I first opened this thing up, it stank to high heaven of it. And it still kind of does, which is impressive. We've got other stuff as well. So we've got a guitar pick. 
see that, there we go. Guitar pick, which is a tooth from a... Okay, what are they called? They're just called Metal Beasts. They're just called Metal Beasts. The Red Butt, the Zalia, which is an Iron Head unit. Um, Iron Head's the last faction uh, control, which is the human one, controlled by Eddie. Then we've got the lanyard worn by Mr. Riggs throughout the entirety of the game, which I'm just going to leave on for now. We've also got... That's just a little magazine about the game itself, about the, uh, the thing about indie box as well as instructions on how to install. Which, uh, honestly, not super duper bothered about that, but it's still cool. Then I believe there's a couple of other things. Big old instruction manual. I love an instruction manual. Um, even in PC games that I'll never play. <laughs> because I've got two other versions of it, for example. Then finally, Coming out. Come on, behave yourself. There we go. We've got the installation disc and the yeah, we've got the installation disc and the original soundtrack, which um is very good. That being said, the soundtrack is also absolutely pumped full of heavy metal classics from Dragon Forces Through the Fire and Flames to Motley Crue. Um, we've got Mr. Crowley by Ozzy, obviously. And uh, yeah. So uh, I have a couple more items that I'm just gonna kind of finish up here with. Um, one I bought myself because I was going through a phase of I must own Brutal Legend memorabilia. And that would be this limited edition t-shirt, which I'm not going to bother opening up, but you can see Eddie on the front there. For the life of me, can't remember where this is from. I think it's Loot Crate. That being said, that might be before Loot Crate's time. Not that Loot Crate's around anymore. And, uh, probably one of my bigger things, a custom pillow of Mr. Riggs from my friends. So, yeah. I think I'll finish up with probably what I like most about this game is it always had something new. Every single time I've come back to it over the last 10 years, there's something new, be it a mission I've never, a type of mission I've never bothered to do before. I still haven't done those more time missions. I can't be bothered, but um, I'll get around to them eventually. Or finding out something new about the gameplay. For example, it took me about 10 years to realise you could ride the... Uh, the lighting rig on your stage and use them like turrets to defend your uh, to defend your base, which is helpful. Would have been nice to know 10 years ago, but whatever. There are a couple of items I, I wish I had for this. Um, I wish I'd bought that statue. That will probably forever haunt me that I will never own that statue. And the ones I've seen are like 800 quid, which is not worth it. The other two, they're basically the same item, but they are, they are subtly different. The limited edition vinyl, which they released back in the day, uh, which looks like the main menu, which was excellent. And I, again, wish I bought it. The other one was the limited one they did two years ago, which I didn't know about, never heard about, and then found out later last year, and by then all 666 copies were gone. And they're now like, 800 quid, which again, too much, too much. Sometimes, sometimes buying ludicrously expensive stuff is too much. But yeah, that's my history with Brutal Legend. That's my Brutal Legend collection, if you want to call it that. And yeah, thank you for joining me. Um, I think next time we'll probably discuss something else. Something else I was into or a fan of. Maybe Prey. Or maybe Haze. Yes, I liked Haze. Um, but yeah, until then, uh, thank you for coming. And uh, this is Delirium signing off.